words force and politics together, it is almost impossible not to think of the modern connection that the two have. But in reality, the issues of racism and equality have long been intertwined with sports. One of the most important parts of the fight for equality in sports was around the time of the Second World War. Many believe it first technically began with the first African-American boxer, Jack Johnson, becoming the heavyweight champ in 1908. It was the first example of a minority athlete winning a championship in any sport. And momentum started to build on itself around the time of World War II, with athletes like Jesse Owens and Jackie Robinson becoming pioneers for different sports, showing that minority athletes could compete and win just like white athletes. While minority athletes got their first taste, so to speak, in American professional sports, the important change really in terms of physical activism began around the time of the civil rights movement in the early 60s. Athletes like Bill Russell, Muhammad Ali, Tommy Smith, and John Carlos, just to name a few names. Also, a quick side note, although white Caucasian people were to blame for this inherent racism in sports, obviously, it is important to mention that without the few white athletes that sacrificed, black and all minority athletes might have suffered for longer. Okay, back to the video. Tommy Smith and John Carlos were both Olympic athletes from Mexico in the 1968 Olympic Games. An Olympics that was so muddy and clouded over by the involvement in Vietnam and the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. They helped to organize the Olympic Project for Human Rights, which during that particular Olympics made different demonstrations advocating for equality. In the NBA, players like Bill Russell and Elgin Baylor were the first examples of players demonstrating protests sitting out games due to discrimination they face in their daily lives. In the NFL, players like Jim Brown led efforts primarily off the field, creating organizations helping black families economically. And in sports like the MLB, black players like Hank Aaron and Ernie Banks were not All in all, during this trivial time in U.S. history, athletes demonstrated activism for equality, not only by helping their community and protesting for what they believed in, but also many of these athletes embodied the idea of being role models to young minorities. of the most renowned ambassadors for the nation of Islam and eventually for all people of color. Probably his most infamous event was when he declared to be a conscientious objector to the war in Vietnam. He was not only stripped of his title but jailed and became a symbol of justice because of the fact that he was not only prejudiced for his race but also his beliefs. Ali later in his life would continue to advocate for equality and help numerous organizations and charities locally and nationwide and was ultimately a hero for, for minorities across the world. So the 50s and 60s were a crucial time in the history for the fight of equality. And as sports steadily rose in popularity, so would athletes' influence on the general public. However, going into the late 70s, 80s, and even 90s for that matter, this was the start of the second wave. The activism by athletes regarding equality wasn't as loud spoken as it was during the civil rights era. However, I'd like to think that as most athletes were not as outspoken during this era, their games and personas played just as impactful as a role in changing racial norms. Some notable, notable events that occurred during this time were the Syracuse 8. In 1970, a group of Syracuse football players sat out a whole season in hopes that their efforts would bring diversity to an all-white coaching staff. In 1989, the head coach of the Georgetown Hoyas men's basketball team walked off the court of a game protesting an NCAA rule that was blatantly targeting uneducated black athletes. In 1991 and 1996, two NBA players, Craig Hodges and Mahmoud abdul Rauf, both made demonstrations causing them to later be blackballed from the NBA, which we see a lot in the modern day. So, I think it's safe to say that most Americans know who Michael Jordan is. Well, it's also safe to say that he was one of the most popular and influential athletes during the 1980s and 90s.
he along with many others would go to show the American public that black athletes could dominate the sports they played. Along with Jordan, athletes such as Arthur Ashe in 1975 uh, became the first black player to win at Wimbledon. In 1984, Grant Fuhr became the first minority Stanley Cup champion, and there were a handful of minorities who were given jobs and titles in sports, such as GMs and head coaches that arose during this time. And it wasn't just these athletes winning championships that made marks. Some athletes helped to make cultural shifts, like Bruce Lee, who is today arguably the most famous mixed martial artist ever, the soccer or football player Pele, who is still considered one of the all-time greats, and there were also black versus white rival rivalries, which clashed old racist culture versus new, more accepting culture, like Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson. Now we get to the modern day, the third wave. The 2000s have been a revolutionary time for athletes in terms of where they protest and how they protest. Athletes are now more than ever using their power and leverage to show what they believe in. Numerous NBA and WNBA athletes such as LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, Maya Moore, and Brianna Stewart. NFL athletes like Colin Ka Kaepernick and Eric Reed. MLB, MLS, and practically every other league has some sort of group or players demonstrate one of the many pressing issues today that surrounds social justice and equality. And in the, mo <clears throat> and in the modern day, day these, protests, these protests are much more elaborate than those of the past. Whole teams are staging strikes, collectively kneeling for anthems, wearing attire, clothing, and doing anything else that will help them get their message across. Some notable events of recent include Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the anthem, which has sparked many backers and subsequently has paved the way for many different forms of protest during the anthem, like kneeling, sitting down, making hand gestures, and in some cases not being present for the anthem altogether. Marches on the street led by athletes and former athletes, especially during the 2019-2020 seasons across different leagues, saw games get canceled and postponed because athletes simply refused to play and sometimes athletes physically protested instead of playing in games. However, one of the key moments for me was Maya Moore, a WNBA superstar who decided to forego the prime years of her career starting in 2019 to solely focus on social justice issues. It is truly one of the biggest demonstrations we have seen from an athlete since sports inception. And eventually free a man named Jonathan Irons who was wrongfully convicted of burglary and assault and sentenced to 50 years in prison in 1997. And more along with many other women like Naomi Osaka, the soccer United States women's national team with Megan Rapino, Serena Williams, uh, women have almost taken it upon themselves to make their messages known and make sure that no voice is left out. I mentioned previously how activism has become more elaborate in the modern day, and by that I really mean it. Probably the most interesting pro protest to me was two years ago when the Washington Mystics, a WNBA team, wore white t-shirts with bullet holes pictured in the back protesting the shooting of Jacob, Jacob Blake, a black man who was shot in his vehicle while allegedly grabbing for a knife. Time will only tell how racial activism in sports will continue to overlap with one another. However, this facet of sports is often ignored by spectators and casual viewers, and it is important that we can learn and help to better understand these important issues that sports brings to our attention.